Would you guys? Common Windows screen resolution issues and fixes. That's what we're taking a look at today. Causes of Windows 10 and Windows 11 black screen on startup is very common. And I'm going to show you some of the reasons why it happens and how to fix them. So first up, we're going to be looking at the first one, which is Windows updates. So Windows updates do go wrong and they can cause a black screen of death on reboot. Another one is when you go and install a program which is a faulty startup application, this can cause an issue as well. And maybe it's an outdated or a faulty graphics driver, which is causing the problem of a black screen. Bad connection between your PC and monitor, maybe a cable is loose or something and it's causing a black screen. Software issue, these can be due to uh, antivirus programs and things like that that are causing a black screen of death. Or hardware issue, which means a failing monitor or a bad cable, which can cause a problem. Problems with your graphics card can also be an issue. Maybe your graphics card is starting to fail and that can cause a black screen of death. And we also have loose cables connected to the PC and the laptop. Now, as a technician, the best way to uh, troubleshoot a issue like this is find out whether the issue is software related or whether it's hardware related, whether it's some sort of driver issue or some sort of software issue, or whether you've got an actual issue with hardware. Maybe it's a bad cable, bad monitor, or maybe you've got a loose connection there, or maybe it's something more sinister like a bad graphics card, or your processor is failing if you're using onboard graphics, or your motherboard is starting to play up as well. There's loads of reasons why hardware issues cause this problem. So let's first talk about the Windows update. You go ahead and update Windows, and you go to reboot your system, and you end up with a black screen or it's going through the configuring part of Windows Update, and then all of a sudden you just get a black screen and it just sits there for absolutely ages and it doesn't boot up at all to the desktop. This is a common problem and the only way to uh, rectify this is to get into safe mode. Now, if your PC is constantly crashing to a black screen or you're having to force shut down the PC, you will get preparing for automatic repair. This is good because this is going to allow you to be able to get into safe mode a lot easier. You can see diagnosing your PC will come up and this normally takes about three attempts of full shutting down the PC to get into this state. Once you get to automatic repair, you can go to advanced options. From here, you can then go down to the troubleshooting tab and click on troubleshooting. Once we click here, you get access to reset this PC. If you want to reset this PC, you can do or you can go into advanced options and try to uh, fix it yourself. Now, so for the first one, we're going to look at uninstall updates. Inside here, this is going to give you two options. It's going to give you the option to uninstall the latest quality update, or it's going to uninstall the latest feature update. Feature updates are those big, massive updates which add new features to Windows. And these are new builds like 22H2 and things like that. If you've done one of those, then use the feature update. If it's a quality update, like security updates and things like that, then use the quality update. Once you go into here, it's going to ask for your details to log in. And this is where you can uninstall either the quality update or the feature update. And this will uh, allow you to do that. So click on here and then uninstall that update. Moving on to the next problem, which is outdated or faulty drivers. You can get to the same location using the same method for shutting down a PC. And it will get you to choose an option. And this time we're going to go to troubleshoot again and then go to advanced options. Click on this one. And from here, you're going to get some options available to you. So from here, first off, if you wanted to use system restore and you've got system restore points, you can try system restore. You can go to here, click on here, and it will open up the system restore window and allow you to restore your PC. If you have no system restore points, you can't use this method for any of the fixes. So let's go back to choose an option and then choose troubleshoot again and advanced options. Click on advanced options here. And now what we want to do is go to startup settings. Click on startup settings. And from here, we're going to choose uh, enable safe mode. And you can see here, there's an option for a bunch of other things in here, but we're going to restart the PC and then go to startup settings window. And this is where we can enable the safe mode with networking or enable safe mode. And uh, that's what we're going to do for this one. We're going to enable safe mode with networking. So we've got access to the internet so we can download uh, software that we need to fix and remedy this problem. 
So let's choose number five and then boot up the PC here. It will go straight into a restart and boot the PC up. And this will take us into our safe mode area. You can see here it's loading in and a window is very small here. Now we do have internet access because we chose number five, which was safe mode with networking, which means internet basically. Now we're going to search for DDU. Now DDU is going to allow us to uninstall the driver. It's display driver uninstaller. Now it's important that we remove all of the remnants of the driver that you've installed because we don't want this uh, leaving any traces behind. And then we go to install another driver and we end up with a problem. This can cause black screens and it can also cause other issues. So it's always best to remove it using DDU. So we're going to use DDU here. I'm going to drag this out and unzip it and put it onto the desktop here. Let's go ahead and put this onto the desktop. And now we can open this up and extract it here. So I'm going to extract it because it's a double zip. Now we've got this extracted. We can remove these other two folders here. We don't need these because this is the one we need. Now we've got this folder open. We should see display driver uninstaller and that's the one we need. So let's double click on this. And you're going to get a little warning here. We are in safe mode, which is where this program wants to be run. And from here, we're just going to click OK here. Now let's click OK and the options window will open up. And from here, we want to make sure that you put the check mark in down the bottom here. You'll see advanced options, prevent downloads of drivers from Windows updates. This is to stop Microsoft downloading a driver for you because sometimes that driver can be corrupt or it can cause you issues. So if you don't uh, put a check mark in there, Microsoft or Windows is going to download the best driver for you, which you don't want because this will put you into a reboot loop with a black screen and we want to remove that from the computer. So go to GPU and go to Nvidia or AMD, depending on what driver you're using. And this is where we can do a clean and restart, which is highly recommended to remove all of the driver remnants from the PC. But before you do that, make sure you download your driver ready so you can just basically click on the install of your driver once it's been uninstalled. So go to either NVIDIA drivers or AMD drivers, depending on what you're using. So click on this to open up the page and choose the all graphics card to download the correct driver for the graphics card you have. So GeForce here, you can see 40 series, 30 series, 20 series, and so on. So depending on what card you've got, you need to select the right one here and then choose whether it's a notebook or whether it's a desktop and what card you have here and then choose search. And this will give you the correct driver for your machine. Click download and this will have the download uh, file on your PC ready. So let's go to our display a driver uninstaller program here and we can now click on clean and restart and this will go ahead and start uninstalling all the graphics driver on your system and all the remnants this will take out any sort of files that are left behind any registry entries or anything like that remove all of that from the pc and once this is done we can then restart the pc it will automatically restart and uh, once we get back to the desktop, we can then go and click on our driver. Now, it's not going to install the driver automatically because we disabled that feature because that's important because we obviously don't want that same driver coming back down if it's causing a black screen of death. Sometimes there's issues with drivers, especially graphics drivers, and they do uh, normally bring out hot fixes for them pretty quickly. But this is a good way of getting around it and fixing it. Now, you can use an older uh, driver as well if you want to if the latest driver is causing issues use the older version until they release a fix so now we've got onto the desktop we can now click on our driver and go ahead and install that graphics driver and hopefully this will resolve your problem so we're just going to let this go ahead and install and then we can move on to the next problem and the next fix which is a very common one which is to do with screen resolutions and things like that so let's go ahead and uh, move on to this next uh, fix here. So let's move on to the next one, which is to do with screen resolutions. And this is to do with your monitor resolution is set too high for, for the display you have, and it just can't get into Windows. So go back to your advanced options here and choose your startup settings. 
and from here you will see enable low resolution video mode and this is the one you'll need to select once you select the enable low resolution video mode this will disable the high resolution uh, graphics card and use the uh, low resolution video mode which will allow you to then adjust your video settings this will then boot you back into the system with a lower resolution uh, video uh, setting which allows you to then adjust and this can be very useful if you've got a black screen on boot up uh, the other way is to uh, take the shut the pc down and remove the cmos battery from the computer remove the power cord from the computer and hold the power button down to drain any power left leave it for one minute and put the cmos battery in and this should clear your cmos once you're at the desktop you can then choose the correct resolution for your pc sometimes uh, resolutions get changed by games or programs and sometimes the coding is pretty buggy on those and it can mess up the resolution sometimes going from one thing to another can uh, jack up your resolution as well so make sure you select the correct resolution for your monitor and uh, once you're happy with that you're good to go so what happens if you can't get into safe mode and you get a black screen so push Control alt delete and this is going to fix any startup applications that you've installed so if you get a black screen on startup push Control alt delete then hit task manager and open up the task manager here so we're not in windows right now we're on the black screen on boot up and you're going to open up the task manager by doing what i showed you here go to the services tab and then find inside here the app readiness uh, service so go back in uh, to services and uh, what we're going to do is come down and look for the app readiness now if this is running what you want to do is stop it so go down and to uh, where it says open service so this will open up the proper service window now look for the app readiness here and then what we want to do is we're going to double click on this or go to right click and properties and then go startup type disable and then apply it and OK. And what we need to do is once we've done this, we can open up uh, the registry editor. So now we've got this disabled, you can put this back on after the fact. But this is if you're trying to boot up your PC and you're getting a black screen after you've installed an application or something like that. So next, go to your task manager, go file. And uh, we're going to go to a uh, new task here and put regedit.exe. And we can now click OK and then click Yes to open up the registry editor. Now you want to go to this location here. Just follow where I go to on the screen here. And you just need to make sure that it says explorer.exe. We need to look for the win logon. So we're going to go to HKey local machine here. Go to software. Open up this one here. Come down to where it says Microsoft open this one up and then we come all the way down to Windows NT so let me drag this down here and uh, drag all the way down to you see Windows NT once you find Windows NT click on this one open it up go to current version open that up and then one more we need to come down to which is the win logon here so let's come down here and we're going to look for the win logon folder click on win logon and then on the right hand pane here we're looking for shell once you see shell click on shell and uh, you should see explorer.exe if you don't see explorer.exe in here or you see some other type of value data then make sure you type in explorer.exe in there and click ok once you've done this you can close off these windows and go back to where it says task manager here so close this off and uh, we need to restart the system uh, by using the power button and holding the left shift key down. Now, if you don't want to do this, you can do the force shutdown three times and it will take you back into that mode again. So whatever way you want to do it, if you can't get into it by doing the left shift key down and restarting the PC like this, so pushing the power button and then holding the left shift key down and pushing restart, and this will take you back into the choose an option window here so let's go ahead and hold the left shift key down and there we are back to choose an option go back to troubleshoot here now we're going to go to advanced options again and we're going to go into startup settings here so click on startup settings 
And what we want to do is go back into safe mode. Now, remember, if you can't get into safe mode because it's still a black screen, use the low resolution uh, mode first. And then once we're here, we're going to go into safe mode and networking. So choose number five, and then the system will be booting into safe mode with networking. From there, we can then uninstall the offending program. Now, you may be saying, why can't I go straight into safe mode automatically but this is what you need to do to remedy this issue so we're going to do this here and then what we're going to do is we're going to go to the start button here go to settings and then go to apps click on the apps here and then choose the app that what you just installed that caused the problem and i'm just going to uninstall a random app here but basically you just click on one and click uninstall like so if it's that app that you've just installed on your PC. Antivirus programs are a common uh, cause of this black screen, or it'd be a game or something like that that's done major changes to something. And you need to select that and then remove it. Let's just say, for instance, this one here, we can select uninstall, and it will remove it from the PC. If you can't remove it from here or you can't see it, you can also go to control panel and uninstall programs from there also. Go to search and type control panel, go into control panel and go into your programs and features here. Inside here, choose the application that you just installed that is causing the black screen. Uh, we'll just say uh, Chrome here, for instance, and uninstall, delete all of the browser history and browser stuff and uninstall it. Whatever the program is you installed that's causing an issue, uninstall it. And then basically you should be able to restart your PC and then you can re-enable the app readiness and basically put that to automatic and you should be okay or put it on manual depending on what you want to set yours as. And you should be able to resolve that issue. Now also you need to go through some of the other things we talked about, which is the hardware side of things where you're you know, checking uh, for the connectivity, make sure you get a good connection. You can try another monitor to make sure the monitor has not failed. If you don't have another monitor, you can plug it into a TV to see whether you get some sort of display. You can also uh, try a new cable. Make sure you try a different type of cable, DP cable or HDMI cable. Try one of those. And then moving on uh, to your other thing, which is your graphics card. If you have a graphics card in the PC, shut the PC down, remove the graphics card. And if it has onboard graphics, if it's an Intel chip or something like that, use the onboard graphics. If it doesn't have onboard graphics on the processor, maybe it's a Ryzen processor that doesn't have any sort of GPU on it, then obviously you will need to try to get your hands on another GPU to see whether that fixes and resolves the issue. Also, as mentioned earlier, you can clear the CMOS by shutting down a PC, removing the power cord, then removing the CMOS battery and holding the power button down to clear any power wait a minute and then put the CMOS battery in and hopefully you'll be able to boot back up. And remember, if you've been messing around with resolution settings and DPI settings or any sort of overscaling and things like this, make sure you put these back to default because this can cause a black screen if it doesn't like it and you try to change the screen again. So if you've gone from a big TV down to a small monitor, it can sort of adjust it automatically automatically but sometimes it can have issues like that and cause a black screen so just remember what you're doing and then revert it back to exactly what it was any changes you've made on the pc you can put those changes back another good way is to reset the pc back to uh, factory settings and see whether the problem goes away if it doesn't it's more than likely hardware anyway with that said i think that is going to be about it for this video my name has been brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I appreciate the support. Also, I want to say a special shout out to Farlap, Halley, Waleed, RTX Brody, Edward Kelly, Albert Hewson, Ron Hicks, Celtic Lad, PC Repair Tech, Vitality, Bill's Computer Repair, Big Daddy, Gary Belts, Mike Bigness, Jedi Buddhist, and Geo Sam and Welsh Tony. I really do appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the very next video or I'll see you on the Discord server for a chat. Have a nice day. Bye for now.